another step forward. Always at your side. I am Vlacket's most loyal servant. She will not abandon me. Kalir's clutch held three dozen eggs, more or less. Though I've learned of creches that harbored a hundred. Humanoid. How I despise the term. Githyanki are quite superior to humans. Though it must be said, you are an uncommonly adequate member of your species. Our biology slates state that Githyanki came to lay eggs after we escaped a lithid enslavement and took to the astral plane. It's an asexual process. A favorable change by any estimation. Hideous to imagine a life where I couldn't partake in the pleasures of sex without the looming threat of bearing children. Shukiani. Githyanki chosen by Vlakith herself to bear young. The queen assigns when and where they must lay, and how many eggs they must bear. The Shukiani pass their eggs in the material plane. In the astral, time barely passes. It is a meticulous process, carefully timed so that the eggs hatch at once. Go on, then. My own Savage would never have threatened a youngling. A waste of time and energy. The pupils themselves culled the weak from their ranks. I myself felled four of my own classmates once Kaleer had a hundred times circled Tyrell. Survival. My people have no use for cowards. Every trainee that I slayed was either too weak to withstand the lessons, or was cocky enough to pick a fight they could never win. They underestimated me, so they paid the price. The Githyanki are only as powerful as their weakest warrior. Jaquith de Venzir, the termination of the frail, strengthens us. Thank you for agreeing to find Walbrin. It means a great deal to me. Indeed.
Let my knee be known.
everything. Ravengard to Longrise Towers, a powerful asset. Just what are their intentions, I wonder? Corpse regards you lifelessly. Gith Yankee, youths. I summoned them to buy time for the others to escape. With Raven God, General Thorn's orders to bring him to the Absolute. The corpse remains silent. It does not know. The corpse remains silent. It does not know. Leader of true souls chosen of the absolute the spell's power wears you can ask no more questions Yes. <laughs> 
It's quite broken. We'll need to find another way across. Traps. How considerate. Be wary. This place is trapped. That'll fit in my pack. Here we go. Walk in the way of dawn, for the thunder cannot protect you where the light doth not reach. about what happened at the crash. <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if, perchance, you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? Uh, ever a man of leisure. Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? And I would confirm it to be so. Please, after you. My thanks for your Excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy the object of my pursuit. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too, finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get out with it.
and a great kindness that would be. See, Gail, even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Fine, fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Right. Um, you see, I, um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gale. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. The very purpose of my presence, in a roundabout sort of way. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. No, indeed. But I think she trusts me too. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistress' will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistress' promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nostra mistra Italian Ross Anna's It is done. 
Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. And I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the skies truven gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. The Doddering Act is merely an illusion, one he's most adept at maintaining. Elminster is the most formidable wizard in the realms, perhaps in existence. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course, we offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted. The absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have, and only I can wield it. Possibly the most spectacular one ever conceived. But essentially, yes, I'm living on borrowed time in more ways than one. Perhaps, perhaps this is how it must be. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. We may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against. I can't believe Mistress demanding Gale sacrifice himself to destroy the Absolute. It's just a waste of a perfectly good cult that we could be controlling. And a waste of a perfectly good Gale, I suppose. Gail's granddad. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. But all right. Must have had something important to say to Gail if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. <sighs> Whoa, now, he's got a... Well, I guess that would explain a little, but... Mistra. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? <laughs> Fuck me. There's devotion and then there's stupidity. If the god of magic can't handle this without sacrificing Gale, she's no god at all. <sighs> Poor Gale. He must be in bits after hearing that. <sighs> I'll distract him. 
tell him I haven't read a book since secondary school. Watch his face melt off. I have a lot on my mind. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tisu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. Simple enough. Just what I need. How can I help? She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. Oh, you know me, never the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. With pleasure, lead on. How can I help? I question the wisdom of that. I'll be here. A shame my first brush with the famed Elminster couldn't be a tad more optimistic. Listen, I might invoke the triad from time to time, appeal to Helm, but I'm no man of faith, not like Gale. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death among countless others to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big Bomb be damned. Gale's got everything he needs to defeat the Absolute already. Talent, nerve, and powerful allies at his side. I hope he'll come to see that. That's the spirit. Well met. Are you sure? And... You wish to speak? Supreme Kithrak, 
Has Vlakith sent you to slay me with your own blade? I've not come to kill you, Lazel. I've come to aid you. Don't trust him. Skakak Kir Gith Shabeleth. My blade rests. Mother Gith compels you to listen. Speak. My ear is yours. I know you carry the astral prism, Lazel. Within it lies the seed of Vlakith's demise, and I intend to help you bring it to fruition. Vlakith's demise? Shkaketh! I should run you through for suggesting it. If they have not said, they must have good reason, and I won't be the one to betray them. But the one inside's chosen you as an ally, protects you with their power. That very power will be the end of Vlakith's tyranny. The Prism's tenant must be let loose. I've sought their freedom for eons. When the Prism went missing, I feared the worst. Instead, you've granted the opportunity I've so long awaited. All that remains is the key that unchains them. And I've found someone who I believe can provide it. Bring the prism to Baldur's Gate. I'll be waiting in a taproom called Shares's Caress. That is where we decide the fate of my people. Lazel, together we will break our chains and be Vlakith's slaves no longer. I am no slave, she's still Kithrak. The Undying Queen is my freedom. It is she who will purify me, and she who will ascend me. Lies, Lazel. Every last one. There is no purification, no ascension. The Zaith Isk does not purify. It extracts memory and kills the infected. Nor does the Lich Queen glorify the ascended. She feeds on most all of them to grow her power and pursue godhood. Madness! You flood me with this... this heresy! I... I will hear no more of it. I served Flacketh the whole of my life. Learned her words, fought her battles, yet she names me her Sharlak. Your words carry truth. I will meet you in Baldur's Gate. Do not make me regret it. Lazel, I see Talakma gear in you. Sister in freedom. Together we will be our people's light. Take this. It is a Quanith, a psionic detector. The Queen's warriors hunt you. The Quanith will sound you out when you come near their portals. Hear its cry and prepare for battle or slip away. I should go. Vlakith's gaze pierces the seas and skies. She believes me loyal, and I can't afford her mistrust. Keep the astral prism close. Let no one take it from you. Slay any who try. Now to Baldur's Gate. I'll be waiting, Lazo. I ever read on Tirsu Slate. But they are no mere aphorism. They are law. They are creed. 
the root from which the 10,000 protocols stem. Forsake one protocol, and forsake Vlakith. Forsake Vlakith, and be the blood and meat which sates her dragons. If Voss speaks true, if Ascension is a lie, if tadpole purification is a fairy tale, then I have not sinned against Vlakith. She has sinned against me. Ascension is a young Gith Yankee's greatest honor. Long ago, the Gaith enslaved my people. They dominated our minds and bred us for war, until Great Mother Gith took a hammer to our bonds. From the day of our hatching, young Gith have one purpose, to train hard enough to slay a Gaith and take its head. Then, we speak the right of Ascension, and a red dragon comes to fly us to Vlakith, in Tunarath, City of Death. We are honored with an eternal home in the Astral, celebrated for our victory. We are ascended, or so I believed. I'd never thought Vlakith a tyrant, or me as a vassal. She was the source of my might, and I the envoy of her will. A warrior, a champion, a destroyer. But if Voss is right, and Vlakith consumes the Ascended to gain power, then I am no destroyer. I am mere livestock, bred to be harvested and devoured. Every Githyanki is a slave with a singular purpose. Not to cull the Geich, not to prevent their grand design, but to raise Vlakith to true godhood. I don't know. I can't know. And that drives me mad. At first, I thought them an illithid deception, a trick of the tadpole. But the dream figure is real. It lives in the prism. Vos believes they are the seed of Vlakith's demise and the agent of Githyanki freedom. And I believe he may be right. Then, when the Kithraki come for me, and come they will, I will submit to their blades. They would feed me to their dragons, and I would deserve no better. Yes. I'd like time to think. We'll meet Kithrak Voss at Charesse's caress in Baldur's Gate. Until then, be vigilant. Vlakith's eyes are upon us. So we're going to meet Voss in the city, are we? Set the tenant of the prison free. This is all very, uh, I don't know. I like a good caper, but I'd long for a tiny bit of status quo now and again. So, Lazel's going to war with Vlakith? Going to break her chains in Baldur's Gate? Good for her. 